G'day folks, well this is one of two videos on the AI Cube, AI Cube tutorials. One of two new ones where I'm going to do something completely different from how I did it earlier on, like four or five years ago. And I will leave those older videos up on the site, but these are my preferred solving methods now. So the first part of these, of each of these, is solving two complete blocks. And so it's going to be exactly the same for each video. So if you know how to do that, you just skip ahead to the relevant part of this one. So let's start by solving those first two blocks. For those who've never seen the AI, it is a very confusing and difficult cube when you haven't solved it. It doesn't come in this format. It, uh, when it's solved and you've never scrambled it, you're thinking, how can I move anything? Uh, so at this point, what we want to do is begin. Let's just take any block. We'll take this block here and I want to find that or I want to make that first and so actually what I do is look around and see if that was already done or if there was something that was closer so I will do that one there is already done so I'm going to make the orange to attach there now in order to move anything I need to be able to move these two layers independently as I can now and if I'm looking to attach an orange piece to there I need to have this move around to there so what's going to happen we're going to cycle Oh, I guess rotate is a better word here, rotate just that block on the top layer. It's also going to rotate blocks on the bottom layer, but you can see these don't matter. So to rotate that block around like that, uh, in a clockwise manner, I want to do this. There it is. Now you can see that the white orange is now up there. It used to be down here. Now I call that up, up, down, down all the time and I call it that whether I'm doing it with this face first or with this face first but you can see they're going to make a difference if you want to rotate it uh, anti-clockwise then it's going to be that face first it's still an up up down down that's almost the only move you need to remember for this cube now because that's there white orange we've got I need to attach that orange to an orange piece in this position so I'm going to go around and just see if there's one there oh there is so now I just need to turn that layer like that you can see I've made that and now I want to keep it safe so I want to rotate it back so it's on the bottom here so that means rotating it that way so it's another up up down down and of course to get it done we need two of them okay that's the first stage of the first block is to get that sitting there now the next stage is to note that this is a white orange so I'm looking for a corner which has white orange on it and that's the one I'm going to build it's over there and I can see that's already attached to a white orange green and so just to, to bring it up I'm going to uh, rotate it so that let's rotate it around so it's like that and I can bring it around here and you'll see what's going on that's now going to sit on top of that it's not quite ready to do so yet but that's where it's going to end up and we can look at that and say, what has this got to be attached to here? That piece clearly is a white green edge attached to a green center. And so that's the next thing that I've got to make, a white green edge attached to a green center. I go find that. There's my white green edge. If it's going to attach to a green center, then it has to be rotated up to here so that the green is here and the center can be there. So I've got to rotate it around this way. Okay, now it's ready to attach itself to a green center. There happens to be a green center over here. If, for example, the green center wasn't in its position, so for example, say it was here and I needed it here, I would then rotate this entire block to put the green over there. Very simple. So now what I can do is move that around to there and attach it and now bring it down to the bottom. Okay, so my white green edge attached to the green center is there. There's the other one that's moved, white, orange, green, that's fine, because I need it to move anyway. Now you can see that I want this to go on top of this. At the moment it's not there, but if I rotate this block, or the block that this is on around like that, it'll be in the correct position. So this is why the first couple of blocks are particularly easy, because I just need to turn this off onto a block that I'm not using and rotate. Now. Just by the way, you can see that has just happened to make that one, and I'm going to take that because that'll be the start of my second block. Okay, so I've made that. When I turn it back, you'll notice that start of the second block stays there because it's on the bottom. 
I turn this back and you can see that I've made that cap, but it's not yet in the position of a cap. So that needs to be rotated so it's up here. So now I rotate it this way. Okay, now I can turn that around and stick it on top of the base and my first block is done. I reckon that's fairly straightforward. Now that's all we're going to do for the second block. The second block happens to be sitting here already. If it was over here, it doesn't matter. I can move it later. So I've got a red green. I'm going to accomplish the same thing here. I can see that that's the correct corner because it's got the red green in it and it's green yellow, which means I've got to attach that corner to a green yellow edge somewhere else. So I go and locate that green yellow edge. It's over here. I want the green yellow edge to be in this position. So I'm going to rotate it around like that. Now, what I can do is bring that green yellow corner around to there. Now, you'll note at the moment I've brought it around and that's great, but it's disturbed the block that I had, so I've got to keep that in mind. So what I want to do to put this cap back on that block is now to rotate this piece up to here somewhere. So let's just rotate it up to the top. Now, when I return the cap of my first block, to get that done, that green, yellow, uh, green, yellow, red that I just made is perfectly fine. Now you can see again, it's sitting on top of here where we want it. What do I need to make to go with it? A red, yellow edge attached to a yellow center. Okay, there's my red, yellow edge. It's attached to a yellow center already. So this is in a position to receive this one. So if I turn that around, I can see once again that this, it's it's going to be in the right block, but it needs to be rotated around like that. So I'm just going to turn it to a block that I have not yet used and rotate it. Okay, once that's done, I can return it to there. I notice that the cap is still not back there. That's okay. That's going to come back easy enough. I want to get this second cap up to there. So I've got to rotate it around that way. Good. Now, what have I got? I'm firstly going to return the first one back. In this case, we'll notice that that second one magically comes back over to there. Now, that's not always the case. So the second one may have landed here and I need to get it across to, to on top of this base. So what I want to demonstrate here, because this will be applicable later as well, is how do you swap Firstly, how do you swap two blocks? If I want to just swap that block with that block, what do I do? Very simple. I don't even know what these moves are. I put them on the screen, but I never think about the moves. So I firstly, let's grab this block. I grab this block, I move it down underneath the other block, like that. Then I do the same with this block. And when I move this block down under here, it's going to put this one into there. You can see there it is now. And finally, I do the exact same thing here, put this in here, and that has swapped those, did I say swapped, swapped those two blocks in their entirety. Now, if I want to just swap the caps, I'm going to, I'll do it with these two because we'll be able to see it much more clearly and then I'll swap them back. I developed this little algorithm. I don't know how I came about it. Um, I think it was a lot of trial and error and thinking, what, how do I get out of this? Basically, I want the two blocks on the left side. So one at the back, one at the front, first of all. Then I want to do the following. Just the upper uh, slice, U2. Now I want to swap these two blocks in their entirety, just like we just did. And finally, I do a U prime. And you can see that the cap from here, so this white orange cap has now landed on top of the red green base and the red green cap has landed on top of the white orange base. Now you can also see that it's swapped the two main blocks entirely, but the important thing there is what it's done is just swap the caps of those two blocks. So if I was in this position, I was I'd finished making my 
second block and I couldn't just do what I can do here and turn them back around. Uh, what I would do, so let's imagine they were like that, I would firstly put these blocks next to each other using that standard sequence that I showed you first, uh, like that. So now the blocks are next to each other, I'd put them on the left and now I do U2, swap the front blocks entirely and then U prime and you can see what that's done is put the cap back there. Now you might think why didn't I just turn that U2 initially and get it done because the problem is I'm at some times I'm going to have these other ones as well. So that sequence will work no matter what and this is the method that I'm going to use in this video which is the finger three cycle method and that means I've got to make some fingers first. What are fingers? Well you've got to ignore the corners they are totally irrelevant when making fingers. Fingers are basically an edge attached to a center. Now we could think of this edge attached to this center or this edge attached to this center. What I'm going to do and I'm I don't know for sure whether this is crucial but it seems to work for me is always look at the edge attached to the center which is is it on its right I don't even know how to think about this um, in an anti-clockwise direction going around like that so instead of the edge being attached to this center I want to make the edge attaching to that center uh, so what that means is if that's the case that's going to rotate those ones there are going to rotate around to here so if I'm looking to attach an edge to a center it's going to be the edge on the left here not the edge on the right so let's have a think first. If I'm going to attach that orange blue edge, I need to have a blue piece over here. And I can see there's a blue center. So I'm firstly going to rotate this block to put that blue center into that position so that I can turn the edge on and turn it around. Now, what I'm thinking is now that I've made it, I've got to rotate it either up here or down there. I'm going to think, well, what's going to happen? It's going to come back and there's going to be a red center sitting there. So it'd be nice if I had a red edge somehow there and I notice that there is a red edge here which I could put into that position by rotating the piece around that way so I'm going to rotate the block which has got the the orange blue edge attached to its center and then now because I've got to turn it back when I turn it back you'll see the two blocks at the back which I've already done they stay as they should and you can see the yellow red has attached to that red center. That's good. I've got to keep that going. What do I want next? Well, that one is done. So I want to keep that intact. So I would probably say in order to keep that intact and that intact, I'll rotate it around this way. If I rotate it around that way, this is going to separate from there. Now, it may not be possible to avoid that in some scenarios, but for now, I'm going to try. Okay, so now I've got that. What did I have? The red yellow that I just made with the red, I've got the blue orange with the blue, I've got this blue yellow here that needs to attach to a yellow. Um, now I've got, which one did I have? I didn't have anything over here. The Both of the ones that I'd done are now over on this block. So I guess I'd look at the blue yellow and say, where's that got to go? Either to this yellow down here or to this yellow down here. Alternatively, I could look to attach a piece from here and bring it over to attach to the orange. The only real issue with that is if I attach it over here, I'm probably going to end up breaking one of these things. So let's bring that blue yellow over and attach it to a yellow. Um, that is not done, of course, because it needs to be these ones to match up with there. So I reckon... Actually, um, to be honest, sometimes it's like, mm, I think I'll try this one. Okay, so I'm going to bring the blue yellow around and attach it like that. If that's attached, well, that is the one that we'd already done, so I don't want to break that. So let's move it around this way. And then let's initially just turn it back and see what's going on. I've got that one done. That's not done. And so I've got that orange that has to attach to something. There is an orange over here, which is a good candidate. So let's turn that around. Now, I don't want to break that. I don't want to break that, therefore I'm going to have to rotate this way. Okay, 
so the two things that I would like to keep intact are intact. Let's turn that back. You can see now I've got one finger done there, another finger done there, and a third finger done there. That's looking good. What have I got over here? One finger done, one finger done, one finger done. Beautiful. Now I will be completely honest and say that there are times when it's a little bit harder than that. And because of that reason, this method is not quite as, what I would say, straightforward as the center three cycle method that I released first. Uh, this method I find more interesting because of that reason. I find it a nice little challenge to make the fingers first. And you can see now that we've done that, it kind of almost magically happened that once I'd uh, done the last finger over here, I turned the face back. Oh my goodness, there's all the other fingers done, which is good. So that is the, the next little stage done. And the thing now is to cycle the fingers home. Now the first thing in cycling these fingers is that I want to have the two the last two blocks that are not yet done opposite each other. So I don't want them next to each other. I want them over like that. So I'm just going to move this block over to there initially. Okay. Now, the cycle is going to, it's a three cycle, so it's going to cycle three of these fingers in the following fashion. Whatever finger is here, so it's not going to touch that, it's not going to touch that. It's going to grab this one, and it's going to move this one. I like to think of it by putting it up there and around to there. It's going to move it to that position. So it's going to cycle that red, yellow over to that position there. And it's going to cycle this one to that position there on the back. And... In the notes, I've put what I think the positions are, but that's what you really need to think about. Now, in order for that to happen, we need to just kind of go, well, first of all, the yellow red, if it's going to go to there, that means I want this corner to be yellow red here like that. Let's firstly rotate this so I've got that yellow red corner in the correct orientation. Now, you'll notice that when I turn it back, I've got yellow, red, red. So yellow, red edge with a red center for that finger. Is that going to match? Remember I said it was these ones? Yellow, red, red. Yes, that's got to be a red center. So that's fine. So that yellow, red piece is going to go to here. The green, yellow, yellow is going to sort of snake around to here. Green, yellow, yellow. Great. That is also going to match up. And that blue, yellow, yellow, where's that going to go? That's going to come back to here. So that will not complete, but that's okay. Now, what's the actual cycle? Here we go. It's quite similar to the center one, but it's not quite the same. It's a slice. It's a U2 on the slice, and then an anti-clockwise rotation. Then a U2 on the up, and then a clockwise rotation. Now it looks a little bit of a mess, so guess what we do? We repeat that exact thing. U2 on the slice, anti-clockwise, U2 on the up, clockwise. Now you'll notice the blue yellow has been brought there into its position. Let's have a look at the back. We'll see that yellow red red has been put there. And the yellow green, which was here, has cycled around to there. And that is now done. And that was fairly straightforward. Now at this point, what have we got? We've got one, two, three, four to go. And what can I notice here? Let's now call this my front block because this has only got one on them. So let's get the yellow orange around to that position. Okay, so that's now in the correct position. That's going to go to there. So that needs to be yellow orange like that. So I better rotate this block first. Okay, let's have a look what's going to happen. The yellow orange will go to there. The red green will go there. And this blue orange will come back to here. That's fantastic because it's going to solve one of these pieces and leave the other three in a three cycle. So let's do the exact same sequence to at least get that yellow orange in place. Okay. 
Okay, there's that whole move. Now we just repeat exactly the same thing. Cannot even remember if I've no, I've done everything now. So we've what have we got? One piece here. If you look around the back, we've got that yellow orange in that position. We've got another two pieces. That's fantastic. We're now down to our last three cycle. This is an orange blue. We better put the orange blue in that position. Uh, like that. Now, this is an interesting one because what we notice here is that this orange blue, that's going to go to there. Then the yellow blue is going to go around to there and the orange yellow is going to come to here. So at this stage, you might think, wait a minute, are we in some kind of uh, never ending cycle here? Because didn't we just have a three cycle and now we're going to end up with another three cycle? But what I've found is that you just need to do this and eventually you will, when I say eventually, after one or two, you will get down to the correct rotation of this corner so that it finishes cycling home the fingers. So let's carry this one out again. Is that in the right? Yep, that's correct. Okay, now you can see that technically that last rotation of this front face is not essential. All it's doing is putting that piece back into this position where we started. So, now what have we got? The yellow orange here, what have we got over on this side? Um, we have got... Yep, so we've got still a three cycle, but now I think, well I've got to get that yellow orange rotated to there. So let's rotate the block. So now what you'll see is the yellow orange on the back block is correctly positioned. That yellow blue, let me do it in the same way that I did it before. Here's my yellow orange. I looked over to the back, said that's going to go to there. That yellow blue is going to go around to there. And this red green is going to come back and solve. And that's what I meant by if you have a three cycle and you think it's going to end and it hasn't, it just means you'll need probably one more routine of this to complete. So let me now complete that. You can see them coming together now. I forgot what I'm doing. I shouldn't talk. There we go. I don't absolutely don't need to do this last rotation because you can see they're all there. And those last two blocks are completed. Now, again, I said in the one on the center three cycle, when I found that, I was just overjoyed. It was so much easier. This one, I was pretty happy as well when I found this one. Didn't have quite the same feeling of, man, that's amazing. But I still sort of did. But I, but I go, well... It's a little bit more challenging in both making the fingers, reducing the fingers, and then also just getting them cycled home. So if you want the super easiest routine, I think it's probably the center three cycle in the previous video. But if you want a nice challenging one that, that is, makes you think a little bit more, then this is definitely the one. So again, at this point, it's time to solve it as a normal two by two by two. Let's do the white face. Oh, this always takes me so much longer than it should. Um, what's that white? Blue. It's a white. Okay. That one can be used to fill in these top ones here. What's that yellow? I don't really want that one. I want the yellow, blue, red. Let's rotate that first of all. And remember, this is really just your own method. Whatever you want to use is fine. What's this one going to be? Yellow, blue, orange, which is that one there. Do 
This one's got to be yellow, red, green, which is here. And put it back and now keep rotating until all the bottom corners come back together like that. And same as the last video, we've got this situation where instead of having them solve, we've got um, a couple of twists that need to be done. So have them both on the top face. This one's got to go anti-clockwise first, so we'll rotate that one. And then we'll move that out of the way and rotate this one clockwise. Put them back and we are home. So, as I said, this is the second of two new videos on the AI Cube. It's probably, if I had to choose one that I would use, it's probably going to be this one. Just because I prefer the slightly higher challenge without the rigmarole of having to remember six last block cases. So, I hope you enjoyed that, and thanks for watching.